Belize is recognized as one of the countries most vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change. In Belize, while we might not be a major emitter, we are, you know, the reality is that we will be impacted by, by climate change. We are being impacted by, you know, some of the, the impacts that are related to climate change, threat factors and hazards, you know? We need to initiate actions on the ground to build our capacity, to build our ability to be resilient, to build our capacity to, to adapt and, you know, mitigate some of the impacts on the ground. In Belize, we are prone to flooding and we are prone to tropical cyclones. And all these factors or hazards affect um, the economy um, in Belize and also the livelihoods of people. We conducted vulnerability studies in some economic sectors of Belize. And these vulnerabilities show that, especially for some sectors, example, the agriculture sector with a one to two degree rise in temperature, there will be a reduction of 12 to 20 percent in yields and these vulnerabilities were taken for corn, beans and rice. Poverty plays well, is a critical factor in terms of vulnerability and disasters because sometimes people do not have the financial resources to respond to the immediate need. They will not survive unless we deal appropriately with climate change. Climate change is here. So whenever we plan and think, wherever we are, climate change must be part of those planning and those thinking. Currently, Belize does not have a climate change policy. So there is need for a policy to provide a sort of a national direction on climate change. You can't tell a policymaker, look man, you need to do this for 2030. They will say, are you crazy? My election is only two years from now. They want to plan only for three years. So you have to put it in a form that they will understand. Countries like the United States and Western Europe can adapt because they have the resources, both human and financial. In our case, we have to plan very carefully. This national investment plan is very important, especially community like Hamburger Ski since we are on that hurricane belt and Hamburger Ski depends on, on tourism so so climate change will have a big impact on the on the tourism so we need to look at plans how to mitigate or how to plan for the future because climate change you know high temperatures and, and bigger storms will have a lot of impact on the coast of Belize especially the reef system we have seen a lot of coral bleaching events that we haven't seen before. So if high temperatures continue, we'll probably see more of that coming and that will have a direct effect on the tourism of Hamburger Ski. We look at Belize City as being a very critical and strategic point for climate resiliency for the country on a whole. And the reason for that is that Belize City is really the hub of our transportation um, throughout the country, but also into the country. When you fly into Belize, you fly into Ladyville, which is practically, uh, we consider it as Belize City already. And so what happens is that the, that area that is Belize City and the greater Belize City area is very vulnerable. Belize City is within two rivers. And if we don't plan well, if we don't uh, do the correct strategies, then we will have severe problems. We will be cut off from our airports, we will be cut off from our cruise ports, from our um, commercial ports. And so it is absolutely critical that, first of all, we look at, at Belize City as, as being an important uh, and very vulnerable area for the country. I think that, that the climate resilience really needs to go to the base, to the education, educating the populace. And my vision would be for good transportation system, good infrastructure, proper education, maybe even a paradigm shift within our leadership into thinking of climate change as more of something that is serious instead of a backbench, a problem that maybe we'll get to it eventually. I applaud the government for taking this very important step because we need to put in place a national policy and strategy, a, a, an action plan to, uh, to deal with the, the realities of climate change. We all know uh, like that climate change is not something that is out there. It's not something for the first world countries or you know, countries in Asia or Europe or whatever. So the fact that the government is looking at doing this 
and, and looking at doing, doing it across, you know, at this cross-sectoral approach, getting in information from the various entities, you know, from the various government entities, from the NGOs, from the communities, this nice integrated dialogue. I, I think I really applaud them for, you know, for taking this, you know, very important step. In terms of leading the process, we're doing a good job. I think it should remain in the Ministry of Economic Development and it must be multi-sectoral, including uh, even your NGOs, your Ministry of Forest Fisheries and um, Sustainable Development, Ministry of Natural Resources, even the land, and certainly the Ministry of Education. To see the interests of the international community in wanting to support uh, the government of Belize and the, the, the projects in, in particular, to me that is an initiative that I think is a very good one, one that I want to be a part of. Some of the um, exciting things that I saw, the opportunities that we have, was the opportunity to, to meet with like-minded organizations, with government departments, uh, representatives, um, to see exactly where we are in terms of climate resilience, to see the gaps that we need, that we have, to prepare ourselves for funding. Um, that's when you realize that there are certain things missing, that we don't have a policy, we don't have a plan, um, we don't have a strategy. So you have to certainly um, start to plan strategically, get direction, prioritize, and then get into the funding phase. I really enjoyed the approach um, that they took is a cross-sectoral approach. So we have our counterparts from all the sectors almost. And, and so what it does is it allows the, the really the heads to come together and, and to try to formulate uh, a way forward. And so I really commend the, the organizers and, and the funding agencies that, um, that have allowed this to happen for, for them to ensure that this type of uh, procedure is taken. Because at the end of the day, uh, we are the ones on the ground that we're working, we're working with the people, we're working with the industries. And at the end of the day, I, I do think that uh, when it comes down to climate resiliency, it is not just a tourism thing, it's not just an agriculture thing, it's not just a health thing, not just a... Uh, engineering thing. In fact, it is a cross section of all those sectors, and and really, this this methodology that we have been using so far is, I think, has been very effective.